Hey guys, Michael Babbitt coming to you with a very different kind of tutorial this time around. I'm going to show you how to build your own audio production PC. Yes, I said PC. One that will rival a Macintosh for under $1,500. Okay, let's go through our parts list really quick. Um, starting off, we got the Seasonic Snow Silent, 750 watt, platinum certified power supply. This is a white power supply. And then we've got a Core i7 unlocked Intel processor. This is probably gonna be overclocked. Then we have our motherboard. This is a Z170S Sabertooth. It is also Arctic white, so that'll look really good with the power supply and the RAM. This is crucial, 32 gigabytes of ballistic sports DDR4. And I am taking the plunge to Windows 10 Professional. And then I've got a Corsair case that's really nice. Um, it's black and white, so everything will look beautiful on the inside. And has a door that opens and closes for easy access. No more screws. Let's put it together, shall we? And you can see it's Christmas over here. I've already unboxed our power supply, which we're going to start with. You can see I've got a mess of cables here, but they're all separate from the power supply itself. This is called a modular power supply, which I highly recommend. This will keep the airflow happening in your computer and everything will be nice and clutter free. Um, there are some cables in here that you won't use at all unless you've got some really old school gear. I mean, check that out. That's an old school power connector. Probably won't use that. So let's go ahead and mount the power supply and then we'll select the cables we need and get it all connected. Okay, we have our case. You can see there's a plastic film on it. I'm gonna leave that until we're done to keep it pretty. Let's open up the case and down here at the bottom, is a nice little spot for our power supply. Okay, we have an ever so slight aesthetic dilemma. You see the text on our power supply is facing this way, but we have our intake fan here and we have our intake vent here. So we're gonna have to flip this power supply upside down, but it's gonna be a good trade off because remember heat is the enemy. Say it with me. There it is mounted in the case. We're gonna put some screws in it and I'll show you where. Let's go around to the other side. And you can see right here, this is where we're going to uh, throw some screws. Locate a bag of four screws, like this one. You see the holes there, and there's one there, and one there, and one there. Now don't be fooled by these two holes here because that looks like a place a screw would go, but behold, it is not. It's that one, right back there. Come back here. And now we've installed our power supply and you see that Seasonic logo is upside down. So sad, but the trade-off is well worth it. So here's where I installed all the screws. May vary depending on your case and power supply. And here's a neat feature. Underneath the case, if you just pull that out, you've got a dust filter. So you'll want to check that periodically if you get this case. Keep it clean. And now it's time to put the processor into the motherboard. Stop. Make sure, remember, you touch something metal that is grounded before you touch any sensitive electronic components. Amen, say hallelujah, let us proceed. Okay, here's our top view of the motherboard and right here is the CPU slot. It's got a protective covering on it. So the first thing we're gonna do here is unscrew this screw. Then we're going to unhitch this lever and raise it up. Okay, we've taken out the screw that holds the CPU hatch in place. Let's go ahead and lift that hatch up very carefully, very, very carefully. You don't wanna touch any of the pins or get any dirt on the inside side there otherwise you could have a very toast computer from the start and that would suck so here's the tensioner bar we want to get that tensioner bar now to the other side of this door so let's grab that and flip it over there we're gonna go ahead and mount the CPU then we're going to use that tensioner bar to lock everything in place all right, now I've gone ahead and taken the CPU, placed it on top of the RAM slots, and left it in its anti-static container. We're gonna install it now, but first, remember that plastic cap that's uh, covering the door? Pop that out now. Save this, hold on to it, in case you ever need to reinstall this into the motherboard to return it for some reason. Okay, there is a CPU installation tool that uh, comes with most motherboards, but I've always found them to be a pain in the butt. So um, use your own discretion, read the manual. You decide whether or not you wanna use it. Me personally, I just like to take the CPU and drop it in myself. To do that, we're gonna match the arrows. At the lower left corner of the CPU, you can see a little gold arrow down there. See that? It's beautiful. And we're going to match it up with the arrow that you can barely see with the naked eye at the lower right corner here of the motherboard. So let's match them up, lay them in very, very carefully. And there you have it dropped in place, beautiful. 
Okay, let's bring the CPU door down very carefully. Let's keep the tensioner bar and the door separate. Drop it into place so carefully, and we'll leave the tensioner bar back. Okay, now that we have reinstalled our CPU hatch door screw, I wanna point something out. There's plenty of play here with the door, so keep that screw really loose, just loose enough that you don't put too much tension on the CPU. We wanna be very careful there because once we bring the tensioner bar down, it's gonna get really tight. Lock it into place right under the latch there, and then afterwards, we can tighten that screw if necessary. There it is, locked up nice and tight. I did turn the screw about half a turn, and that was perfect. <laughs> I also managed to get a uh, fingerprint on top of the CPU, unfortunately. I'm gonna go ahead and take some isopropyl alcohol and just rub the top of the processor, clean off all of the fingerprints that I put on there. Okay, so here we are at the back of the case. There's a little piece that's gonna fit right here in this empty slot. And if you got this same Asus motherboard that I got, it's this piece here. Um, important to note is there's a little filter that goes right over the top here, and you can see the holes that it clicks into. <laughs> Tricky to do this with one hand, but it goes just like that. And then let's install it into the case. Okay, inside we go. So the uh, USB slots go to the top. It's a little ridged here and it'll snap right into place. Ta-da! There you have it, snapped in place. Now it's ready for our motherboard. And this sexy beast just arrived today. This is the Noctua CPU fan. Let's put it up on top of our CPU, shall we? Ah, look at the sexy beast. Out of the box, there's the Noctua fan and all the accessories. There's a mounting plate, so we're gonna take that and we're actually gonna mount it to the undercarriage of the motherboard here, which will give it some support. And it was nice and kind enough for them to uh, give me some silver paste in the box. To mount this on the back, we gotta line up the screws. So you can see where all the screw holes are here. It's gonna go right in like that. Very important. Okay, and when it's in, that's how it should look. So let's flip it over and uh, tighten the screws in the top and then we'll uh, install the rest of our fan components. Next thing I did was install the mounting bars, top and bottom, long ways. And then uh, you can see there's some little nubs here. You wanna make sure obviously those are facing up and not down to your motherboard. And then there are some spacers underneath. So you wanna install those before you drop them in. And the next thing you wanna do is uh, tighten the screws up on top. You don't wanna use very much force, so be very careful. You might actually just be able to and tighten these. Tighten them slightly with our screwdriver. Okay, the next thing we're gonna have to do is remove our fan so we can access the little screws here. Put those in to those posts that we were looking at earlier. Turn the heat sink on its side. There's a little plastic protector here. We can remove that now, preparatory to applying the thermal paste. Now, before applying the thermal paste, what I like to do is make sure that it's gonna flow out nice and slow so I don't make a mess. Using a paper towel, let's go ahead and expel a little. That looks good, got a good flow going. So let's now apply it to the top of our processor. After we take a break and eat some Soylent Green Crackers with unicorn meat, mm, protein. Obviously, you wanna be very careful when you do this. We're just gonna put a small X in the very center of the processor. We don't wanna to put too much, otherwise it will squish out and overflow on the sides. So here we go. Let's apply a small amount to the top, very carefully, and there we go. Now let's take our sexy CPU fan and place it ever so carefully on the top without getting paste everywhere. And ta-da, there we go. Looks beautiful. Then we're gonna secure it in place by screwing in both screws on either side. Now let's go ahead and replace our CPU fan. At the bottom here is an indicator that shows which direction the air is flowing. So we're gonna place it in with the airflow going out the top. Then let's take each clamp on either side and reattach them to the heat sink. Ta-da! Let's celebrate the occasion with more unicorn meat. And now it's time to take the CPU fan power supply and plug it in to the motherboard. Boom, there it is, plugged in. Now let's go ahead and turn the camera so you can see that on the right of your screen, that's actually gonna be the top of the case, so the airflow is going that way. And now it's time to introduce the RAM. Let's take a look here, we've got uh, four slots. They're in pairs, signified by the dark gray and the light gray. If you're only installing two blocks of RAM, use the dark gray. Now let's install our 32 gigs of ballistic spots. Each slot has a lever that we need to pull back before we insert the RAM, so let's do so now. And you'll notice the other side doesn't have any. Line up the groove in the RAM with the nub in each slot. They can only go in one way, and then snap it in. Just like that. 
Time to go back to our modular power supply and this mess of cables we were looking at earlier. We're going to uh, have to pick out the ones we need for our motherboard. This cable right here is the main power supply for the motherboard, so we're going to use that and plug it in right here. It's important to note that each power cable has a label on it, so at least we know what it's for. This one has split ends, this one does not. So we're going to choose this cable because our power supply will fit perfectly into the motherboard slot here. And flying over the landscape in our helicopter, we see inside the case we've got some nubs that are sticking up, and we're going to place our motherboard right on top of those nubs. So let's locate the screw holes in our motherboard. One here, one in there, one up here, there's one there, one down just a bit right there over on the opposite side, and finally one at the top here. Now before you drop your motherboard down into your case, it's always a good idea to whip out the tape measure and make sure everything's gonna line up beautifully. All right, let's go back to the case. We're gonna remove any obstruction to the motherboard like this fan cable here. Let's just loop it over the top for now. We'll get back to that in a minute. If you have a protective sticker that's covering the LAN port, go ahead and remove that now. Placing your motherboard is a very delicate process, so please be very careful and patient when you're doing this. Don't scratch the bottom of your motherboard with the screw posts. We're going to come at an angle downward. The top of your screen is the back, and that's where the components are going to stick out, so make sure those go out nicely first, and then lay it down carefully on the screw hole posts. And then once it's sitting in here all nice, we can screw it down. All right, let's venture around to the back of the computer, where you can see now your components are all nicely lined up with the back plate. Now let's plug in that uh, cable we got out of the way. That's for our rear exhaust fan. We're gonna put it right here next to the power supply for the CPU. Now every case should come with some hardware. This one came with a little box tucked inside the hard drive slots. We'll pull that out and we'll see what goodies await us inside. Ah, a plastic bag in which contains screws, zip ties, everything you need to secure the contents of your case. And for your benefit, we will quickly identify a few of these. These will secure fans to your case. These will be fastened into the case and your motherboard sits on top. You will use these to secure your motherboard to the posts that we just showed you. These are a little more universal. They can be used for securing power supplies, optical drives, even hard drives that spin. And these little guys are used for mounting solid state drives. Now that we know which screws to use, let's go ahead and tighten down the screws on our motherboard, but not too tight. Locate this cable now. This is the USB 3.0 cable. This will connect to the motherboard and power the front USB 3 ports. We're gonna plug it in right there. Now you should have a couple of USB cables like this. These will plug right here into your motherboard and they power the USB 2 ports in the front. And how about this handy gizmo? This terminal block allows us to easily connect our mess of cables from the front panel power switch, reset switch, and activity lights, and then easily connect that block to our motherboard. If you flip these cables around on the back, you'll see a little arrow that identifies the positive post. Once you've matched up the positive posts, now you're ready to plug that terminal block directly into the motherboard. Like so. Now we've plugged the motherboard power supply in. We talked about this earlier, but I have a little bit of a dilemma here. I should have probably done this the other way around. Plugged these ends into the power supply first because uh, they got to split off separately and then I got to curve them around like this and contort myself. And with some bending, stretching, and twisting, we got it plugged into the power supply. There's a block on top and a block on the bottom. That's the way that this C-Sonic is designed, so you want to make sure you split them. Next, let's plug in the power supply for our CPU. Here's the cable again, and here it is plugged in. Lovely. Take the other end, wrap it around the back of the CPU fan heat sink, and then plug it into the power supply. Let's take a look at our diagram for the motherboard. This is where everything should now be connected. If you need to review, feel free to pause the video right now. Now you can start tidying up your cables using those zip ties and secure them down, clean up things, make it nice, get them out of the way so you can finish up in here. Now it's time to install some hard drives. Let's remove the drive bay first. You can see here there are four small screw holes that uh, fit an SSD drive. I'm actually not going to use this SSD. I'm going to put a large spinning drive in here, but I do want to show you how it's mounted. And you can see the ends that I'm going to connect are facing the rear. And if you do want to mount a large spinning drive, it's even easier. Once it's mounted, put it right back where you got it. Wow, a cool thing about this case is it has a hidden compartment on the side where you can slide the SSDs into these uh, little removable bays. 
Check this out. Simply pull out the bay and slide in your drive. Ta-da! Then bring it around and snap it right back into place. So now let's connect our hard drives. We're going to need to use this cable. This is a power cable. Um, so one end is going to go to the drive like that. It's the flat end. You'll see the connector for it. And then we've got to kind of weave it through this configuration. And finally, it's time to connect our data cables. These are SATA cables. Each SATA cable will plug directly into the motherboard here. Usually you've got a straight end. And then there is an angled end that will typically plug into each hard drive. And now the moment of geekdom has arrived. Plug it in. Power it on. Don't forget to push the power button on your front panel. And enter the BIOS. You're going to want to go in here just to make sure all your stuff is working properly. One thing I'm going to show you how to do really quickly is overclock your CPU. And of course, there are other things you can change in here and really break. So be very careful and refer to your manual, of course. All right, let's venture on down to the lower right corner. Click on Advanced Mode. Then go up to the top and click on Easy Tuning Wizard. Now you can see I've already overclocked my CPU, uh, but we're just going through the motions. Click next, then click on gaming, media, editing, click next again. I went ahead and selected water cooler as the option uh, because we have that sexy knock to a fan. Click next, and it's going to give you this um, notice about how much performance is going to increase it and a nice warning about what will happen if your system becomes unstable. No, you'll be fine. Once finished, save your changes, reboot with Windows 10 in the optical drive, and follow the prompts. Hey guys, what's up? It's been one month since I built this monster and I can happily report it's been running rock solid. I did install an extra 32 gigs of RAM, so now there are 64 gigabytes banging out sound design projects, music projects effortlessly. I will tell you, Windows 10 is a little quirky, so I've got some tips and tricks that will help you optimize it for your audio projects. So keep an eye out for that video, but until then, enjoy your new machine. Visit our website for more information about the music creation and production tools available from these fine producers. And don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can be the first to know when new videos arrive. Yeah.